Buongiorno! Welcome to my channel. Today is a little bit different. As you can see, uh, I am here in my uh, bedroom and I will go through my perfume collection and do what I hope to be a massive declutter. So, first of all, let me show you how my collection is looking now and where I store it. And then let's go through each of the fragrances that I own. So now let me show you my collection. Here is my collection. This is not everything. Uh, it used to be very organized by brand mostly and was really aesthetically pleasing. But then uh, I bought this coat and I rearranged my closet. So uh, now it looks like that. So let's move to here. Here are mostly the fragrances that I featured in my hauls. Here is all the samples. So we have boxes and boxes and boxes of samples. I really try to keep them organized. But unfortunately, once I organize them, it's a matter of three, four days and it's a mess again. So I really have to figure out a system for um, like my sample collection. It's quite huge. Here in the back you have a box from Bulgari. This is in preparation for a video uh, that I didn't film yet. So also this box I will not open. So as you can see I am really struggling uh, for space here and to be honest 40-50% uh, of the fragrances that you are seeing uh, I don't like or I am not uh, really in love with. But since I am doing now YouTube, uh, I'm not sure that I'm really going to declutter either, even the fragrances that I am not really in love with. So I'm a big fan of Comari. And actually the first video I wanted to do on YouTube was about the Comari method. That was about three or four years ago. And I filmed it actually, but I never edited it and I never uploaded it. And since then, uh, it became my habit each year to do like a swipe across all the categories and uh, just declutter a lot of stuff. In the, in the past, it was mostly uh, clothes that I was decluttering, but I think this year it will be makeup and fragrances. I wonder why. Anyway, so if I apply the Comari method, I will be left with really like maybe, I don't know, but I never thought about it, but I think maybe 20, 15 fragrances uh, if I'm lucky. And since I am doing this now on YouTube, I don't think I will apply like the Komari method, but I still want to show you if I would apply the Komari method, which will be my choices. So I saw a video recently uh, of Polina Shar doing a declutter where she organized it or uh, divided her uh, collection in three categories. So you have love it, like it and hate it or declutter it. And I think this is exactly what I will do. Uh, and I will include in the love category uh, the fragrances that uh, like borrowing the term of Komari spark joy in my heart. So now I will move all these fragrances on my bed and let's start this video. Okay guys, here is all my collection. I even went to the bathroom and pulled the one that was in the bathroom, uh, the ones that I used uh, like for after the shower kind of fragrance. And I'm waiting for a delivery of some new fragrances and a lot of samples uh, that I am waiting for in the mail. And my cat is saying hello. So now let's show you quickly. Of course, this is my cat. Uh, and the two Killians that I own. I don't own any of like the real niche Killian. Two Aqua di Parma, Julieta Zagan, Amouage, A Parfum de Marly. Then we have Lancome, Chanel in the end here. We have Tom Ford, Atelier Cologne, um, Armani Privé, Dior, uh, the private collection, and then uh, like the normal Dior. Then we have here Roberto Cavalli, uh, Jean Paul Gaultier, Narciso Rodriguez, Guerlain, Trussardi. Versace, uh, Valentino, Elisam, 
uh, Yves Saint Laurent, uh, Carolina Herrera, Givenchy, Dolce & Gabbana, and then in the end there is Michael Kors. Fragrances where like I have only one from the brand, so we have uh, a lot. We have Desigual, we have Hollister, we have um, we have CK, Mugler, Bulgari, uh, Hermes, Kayali, Guess, uh, Laura Piaggiotti, uh, etc. So I counted all the fragrances and I have to tell you, I was shocked. I have 101 fragrances. Yes, this is definitely too much. Um, and I also counted the two fragrances that I didn't uh, tell you about. And if I count the fragrances that still I am waiting for, that didn't arrive yet, I will have 107 fragrances. I don't like to collect fragrances and that's it. I have to really like the fragrance and actually wear it and enjoy it. So let's start so here i have like the real niche fragrances in my collection and uh, let's start uh, amouage is the most beautiful gardenia you can ever ever smell in your life mm, it's amazing i really really love it as uh, this is a 50 ml and if it wasn't for the price tag i would have definitely bought the 100 ml this is a fragrance that will definitely remain in my collection a perfect wedding fragrance by the way so amouage honor is a um, definite love then we have a wajan and this is the most beautiful gourmand oh my god the cap is like ah oh, yes oh this is the most beautiful gourmand cinnamon honey fragrance you can smell. It's actually from um, like the men collection from Parfum de Marie, but I find it totally unisex, leaning feminine, to be honest. I do have all the feminine fragrances uh, in the form of a decant and also some of the men uh, collection. And I find the men collection much, much better than the feminine, by the way. I did the first impression on Parfum de Marly and I am collecting now the samples and decants to do a full review of both men and women uh, collection from Parfum de Marly. So Wajan is a definite love. Now let's move to Juliet has a gun vanilla vibes. This is the most beautiful salty vanilla you can smell very addictive uh, i got this uh, as a sample um, for a video as that i did like uh, my first impression on niche brands and that was my first um, try of niche brands in general and um, i didn't like it so much at the beginning but then when i tested it uh, on my skin I fell in love with it and I really, really love the bottle. It's absolutely beautiful. So yeah, this is a love for me. Next, I have Aqua di Parma. I have here Arancia di Capri and Mirtu di Panarea. Both of them are uh, my go-to summer fragrances. I love them both and, I, and I'm the biggest fan of Aqua di Parma, but if I have to be honest, uh, since then I tested a lot of fragrances and also fresh fragrances. And for now, these are not my absolute favorite. I don't know when coming summer uh, will I change my mind. But for now, I think I will put these in my like. Very strong like, let's say like that. My last uh, niche fragrance is from Atelier Colon and this is Orange Sanguine. This is, like the name, the perfect representation of a blood orange. It's really authentic. It smells exactly like a blood orange. I don't know how they did it, but they did. Of course, uh, as all Atelier Colon and also like Aqua di Parma, they are not very long lasting. I usually use this after the shower. That said, again, I can't categorize this as joy sparkling, like a real love of my life. It's definitely a major like, but not a love. Now let's move to uh, my Armani Privé collection. I have four of them. Ambre Centrico, Vermalakit, 
الجسمان كوزامونو and بيفوان سوزو I genuinely adore this line this is one of my absolute favorite uh, private collection from a designer and another one of this line is coming very very soon so stay tuned let's start I have here Ambre Ecetrico this is a beautiful spicy yeah it's a spicy amber I really adore it it's of course a winter fragrance like real winter I tried to wear this one uh, I think a month ago and I felt suffocated but this is not a, like a real love for me if I have to choose between this one and uh, Wajan for example I will definitely go with Wajan still I love it I really really like it this is why will this will be in my like category now let's go to my baby Ver Malakit oh my god this is the most beautiful creamy dense warm sweet jasmine you can ever smell in your life I adore it this is definite yes in my life I can't really I can't imagine my collection without the Malakit I absolutely adore it and I'm not like someone who buys backup but for this yes so that's so this is a love for me then we have here Jasna Kuzamunu and this is a very beautiful fresh jasmine uh, this is as you can see from the bottles like the clear bottles from Armani are from uh, Les Eaux collection which means they are eau de toilette and this doesn't perform very well I like it but it's not a love for me uh, so yeah just Marcos Amuno is in like then we have a peony fragrance this is Pevoin Suzu definitely one of the best peony fragrance in the market a very nice watery fresh peony uh, I really like it but again it's not a love now let's move to Lancome let's start with the private collection or the Maison Lancome collection uh, then and then go through like their normal uh, collection uh, and let me start by saying I love this collection especially for the bottles oh my god the bottles are just gorgeous 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 I love them even like the small uh, size it's beautiful really really beautiful so Oud Bouquet is a very jammy rose with praline and oud everybody says that this is a nice introduction to oud uh, i have to agree but since i bought this one on christmas i smelled a lot of oud fragrances and i have to say it's still a nice introduction to oud but it wouldn't wouldn't be my first choice um it's a beast mode fragrance definitely for winter and to be completely honest, I am holding on this fragrance only because of the bottle. And also, uh, it seems like a stable in everybody's collection, so maybe I'm influenced a little bit. But yeah, uh, if I'm not making uh, videos on YouTube, I think I will declutter this one because it's just a like. Next, we have Jasmine's Marzipan, and this is a definite love. Oh my god, I love this fragrance so, so much. This is a strict, beautiful, intoxicating jasmine. It's just beautiful. The most beautiful jasmine you can ever smell in your life, really. If you are a jasmine lover, you have to have this one in, in your collection. It's definitely worth the hype and worth the money in my opinion uh, longevity is a little bit tricky on this fragrance but someone told me maybe i am getting a mosmic to the fragrance because after two hours it just disappears not like it fades away no it just disappears on my skin so i don't know if you own this fragrance please let me uh, know in the comments down below how does it perform on your skin so Jasmine Barzipan, definite love, 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 love. Here we have Pivoin Pontemps. This is again a peony fragrance. This is a peony pink pepper 
rose musk fragrance so mostly what you get here especially in the opening is the pink pepper the pink pepper is really like uh, it's almost it almost takes over the peony which i actually love if i had to choose between this one and uh, pivoin suzu oh this is this will be really difficult but for now i would say this one but I may change my mind uh, like after a few days. <laughs> I love them both. Uh, so yes, uh, this is a definite like for me. A very, very, very strong like. Now let's move to Fig and Agrum. I don't know how to pronounce it. This, as the name says, is Fig with, I think, orange. I don't remember. Yeah, some citrusy notes. Uh, for the longest time, I had Fico di Amalfi from Aqua di Parma on my wish list, but since I got this one, uh, I, I don't anymore. I really, really like it, and I am considering buying a full bottle. Uh, I will do a dedicated video uh, coming summer uh, on fig fragrances and a comparison between this one and Aqua di Parma, so definitely stay tuned again. So, uh, this is a like. The last one is Magnolia Rosé. This was a blind buy and I definitely regret buying this fragrance. Magnolia was rose and I have to say I don't like the rose fragrances from uh, the Maison Lancome line. <laughs> but I can't declutter, I just can't because of the bottle. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. I know this is not a legit reason to keep a fragrance, but for now I just can't let it go. So this will go on my like fragrance, although I don't like it. Now we have the fragrances from like the normal line of Lancome. Let's start with these. This is Idon, uh, the original one, and this is the intense version. This is a rose, fresh rose fragrance that you can see I did make a dent in this fragrance. Uh, when I first bought this fragrance, I really, really liked it, mainly because I was really into rose fragrances in general. And honestly, now I am not so much into rose fragrances. Um, not that I dislike them, but maybe I'm just bored with them. I will declutter this one. So this is the first fragrance to be decluttered. Then we have the Intense. It's also rose, but mainly, uh, you have the jasmine ja uh, amped up in the intense version and also the musk. I prefer this one to the original one, but still the same issue. I don't like it so much. I did a full comparison between uh, both of them on my channel, uh, which I will leave linked down below and in the eye up. If you are wondering about the differences between uh, these two, it's one of my first videos on my channel, so it's <laughs> definitely cringe-worthy. Not that this one will not be cringe-worthy in the future, but yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, I think I will declutter both of these. Now let's move to uh, La Nuit Trésor Caresse. I really love the bottles of Lancome in general. Really love the bottle, don't like the scent. So I mainly was influenced to buy this one because, yeah, uh, because I wanted the bottle and I don't like the original uh, La Nuit Trésor. And this one, the Caress version, is being discontinued. So I just bought it and it was on discount. But now, uh, yeah, there is something which I find in a lot of Lancome fragrances. The musk in Lancome, I just don't like. Something in the base of this fragrance really bothers me. So, so I think I will declutter this one. I don't have to think a lot about this one. This will be immediately decluttered. This is Hypnos. This is a vanilla licorice or anise, I don't remember, fragrance. Uh, I don't know what happened. Uh, when I tested this one on my skin, and I got the anise or like the licorice note, but it did fade away on my skin and I was left with this just beautiful uh, smooth vanilla. Now I really, really get the licorice even in the dry down and I can't stand licorice. It's just, oh, no, I just can't. I just can't do licorice. So uh, yes, this will be decluttered immediately let's move to 
uh, La Vie Belle Soleil Cristal. Just, oh, again, look at the bottle. So beautiful. Uh, this is mainly a coconut patchouli fragrance. Uh, has a little bit of the La Vie Belle DNA, but it's really, really um, different to all the flankers, actually. I actually like the coconut here, but since I bought it, I smelled other coconut fragrances. And to be honest, uh, I prefer them to this one. So I didn't find myself using that one so much as I expected. And for some reason, I now find it cloying. So I think if I, if I have to be honest with myself, I will declutter this one. Yes, yes, I will definitely declutter it. Now let's start with Chanel. And let's start with this one. This is from Les Exclusif line from Chanel. This is Gardenia. It was more like an impulsive buy, to be honest. Uh, it's mainly a gardenia, as the name says, but it has a sharp, almost green vibe to it that I don't like. It's not smooth. I really love smooth, creamy fragrances. It's not like Amouage Honor, where the gardenia is really smooth, creamy. This is more sharp, uh, almost green, uh, fresh gardenia. I bought it because I turned 40 last year and I just wanted to buy a Chanel for myself. I just had this urge to buy a Chanel um, and I just went with this one because all the ones I smelled I didn't like so much. If I wanted to be honest with myself I would put it in the declutter bin uh, but for some reason maybe because of the price I think this is the most expensive fragrance in my collection if I consider what I actually paid, not like the retail price. So, um, no, I I want to declutter it, but I just can't for some reason. So I will put it in the like bin, although I don't like it. <laughs> now let's move to this one. Oh, it's really dirty, sorry. This is, oh my God, this is the vintage Chanel Coupe. This is my first fragrance that I ever had in my life. Yeah, it went bad, of course, as you can imagine. I shared recently that I wanted to buy a new one and I discovered that, that this one has been reformulated. I am really, really upset about it because this is the most beautiful fragrance I ever smelled in my life. Of course, although this went bad, I will definitely keep it in my collection. Uh, yeah, mainly, yes, for, for sentimental reasons. Uh, yeah, and just to remind myself how this fragrance was one day. So this will definitely remain a love for me. Speaking of Coco Chanel, let's talk about my, my most recent uh, purchase from Chanel. This is Coco Noir. Isn't this is similar to the Coco like you find in the stores now, but a little bit more dark, a little bit more sexy. This is a recent purchase, so I didn't even wear this one, not even once. So I really can't say if I love it or like it. For now, I like it. It's not a love, but I didn't give it the chance to become the love of my life. So I will put this one for now in the like bin. Let's go to the classics and this is Coco Mademoiselle. This is one of my oldest fragrances. This was a gift from my husband. And <laughs> if I want to be honest, I know he doesn't watch my channel. This is why I can't say it. I don't like it. This fragrance is, my, is in my collection for 14 years and this is how much I used it only. Uh, I think he knew how much I love uh, Chanel Coco. He went to the store and maybe the lady uh, suggested this one, but I don't like it. Because it's a gift from my husband and because it's a classic, I will keep it in my collection. But I actually, if I wanted to be honest, uh, it would have been in my declutter bin. For now, it's in like. Let's move to another classic. This is Chanel number no. five. This was a blind buy. As you can see, it leaked uh, because I bought this fragrance. Uh, I think it was with the points from an I had with uh, Lufthansa or something, one of the like uh, airlines. And I just bought uh, Chanel number no. five because I 
because it's like Chanel number no. five. Everybody talks about it. I have I've never smelled it before, and of course I don't like it. I am keeping it mainly because this is like a piece of history, you know. But yeah, I will keep this one, but I actually don't like it. Let's move to this one, which I actually like. This is Gabrielle the Essence. It's just an, a very a classy, elegant, elevated, signature worthy fruity floral, <laughs> if that makes any sense. I really, really like it, especially for this time of the year. This is a big like, but not a love. Uh, and the last Chanel I have, this is Chanel Alors. I bought this one also for my birthday. Uh, and for some reason, when I tested it, I really, really liked it. And now I don't anymore. It's again, it's like Gabrielle. It's like a fruity floral, elevated fruity floral, uh, very fresh, very elegant, classy fruity floral, signature worthy. I, I will actually declutter this one. Now let's move to Dior. And this is definitely one of my favorite uh, houses in general. Let's start with the private collection. This is the most recent release from them. This is Eden Rock. Oh my god, I love this one. This is a very unique mineral jasmine. I love this fragrance, but the performance is just terrible on it. It's like a cologne. So I have to re uh, spray this fragrance uh, all the time. I really, really love it. And I'm actually considering buying I like the big uh, bottle of this one because this is how much I like it. And I did a full review of this one uh, on my channel. I will leave it linked down below and in the eye up here. This is totally unisex, uh, leaning a little bit feminine, to be honest. Uh, but I love it. I absolutely adore it. Uh, this is a love for me. Now let's go to Ojasma des Anges. This is definitely one of my favorite jasmine fragrances. As I said before, this is exactly how I remember like the jasmine um, in Egypt. I really, really like it. But if I have to choose between this one and jasmine's marzipan, for example, I will definitely go to jasmine's marzipan. So I will put this one on the like, although it's almost a love. Now let's go to the most elegant, sophisticated, elevated. This is so beautiful, guys. It's, it's really worth the hype. It's one of the most beautiful fragrance I've ever smelled in my life. Very unique. I never smelled anything similar uh, to this one. A little bit sweet, but not too much. Woody, aromatic, but it's just a very intoxicating combination of notes, uh, a signature worth the, uh, just an amazing fragrance. This is definitely a love for me. If you didn't see my video where I shared my first impression on the Maison Christian Dior line, I will leave it again linked down below uh, if you want to watch it. Uh, and stay tuned because I am doing a full review of the whole private collection from Maison Christian Dior. Now let's move to one of the most hyped fragrances uh, in uh, like the fragrance community. This is Feve Delicieuse. This is mostly a spicy tonka bean fragrance, um, very potent uh, beast mode fragrance, very warm spicy tonka and um, gourmand beast mode fragrance so definitely more suited for winter time i bought this one recently so i really didn't have the chance to play with it still i will wait for the winter to really decide if this is like worth the hype or not for now it's a like let's move to pure poison <laughs> although this is a recent acquisition of my i actually know this fragrance and this is a very sexy jasmine uh, it's fresh with a little bit of a woody undertone i think there is also gardenia here definitely a stable for jasmine lovers but again if i have to choose between this one and jasmine's marzipan of course i will go with jasmine's marzipan so though i really 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 like it uh it's not a love for me now let's move to j'adore 
I have here the Eau de Parfum and here is the recent um, J'adore Infinissimi that came out last year. The most beautiful, elevated, uh, fruity, floral fragrance. Just, uh, this is a masterpiece. This is a real masterpiece. And uh, although it's now on the market for the longest time, I find it a classy fragrance that will never go out of fashion. It's in the same category like Chanel Gabriel. So a little bit fruity, floral, elegant, but but in a very fresh, uh, elegant, classy way. This is a definite love in my collection. I don't care what anybody says, this is a sexy fragrance. Yeah, definitely for a more mature sexiness, but yeah, this is a love. Now let's move to the Infinissimi. It's, it's more of a creamy tuberose. Uh, I wouldn't define it as bubblegummy. I would say it's a very creamy, tuberose uh, with sandalwood. This is for me like J'adore but for winter time. Uh, but since it's a recent acquisition of mine I will just put it in the like bin. Let's move to Joy. This is the original one. Uh, as you can see I really really liked this fragrance but I don't anymore. When it was first released I didn't understand why everybody uh, is like saying how boring it is. I really liked it and I found like the name very fitting. Maybe one day I will tell you <laughs> my story with this one, but for now, although I don't like it anymore, I will hold on it for sentimental reasons. So, uh, your joy in the like bin. Now let's move to the two Killians that I have. This line has been discontinued. Uh, I, the only one that I liked was these two. Uh, so uh, the first one here is Boys. Boys is a very beautiful Coca-Cola. Uh, oh my God, I love this fragrance so much. <laughs> oh, it's um, it has a very fun Coca-Cola uh, note in it. It's mostly a big, big massive like for me. Here is Killian Princess uh, and mostly this is a marshmallow tea fragrance. It's It smells like you took a marshmallow and you dipped it in a very hot green tea so it, it started to melt and you get this aroma from the marshmallow but it's very diluted by the tea. Uh, this is how I would describe this fragrance. I'm not a fan of marshmallow scents or like gourmand in general but um, this one I can tolerate but I should declutter. The only reason why I don't it's because I know it's discontinued and somehow in the back of my mind I say maybe I will change my mind and I won't be able to get it again. I just can't. I will put it in the like bin but it's in a very uh, low category of like if you know what I mean. Now let's move to Tom Ford. I don't have a lot. Uh, I have here Eau de Soleil Blanc and Fleur de Portofino. They both I really, really like. This one is definite like. It's not a love for me. It's definitely a bougie uh, summer coconut fragrance, but it's not a love for me. So this is a like. Fleur de Portofino, again, this is a very nice summer fragrance, but again, uh, this is a very recent acquisition of mine. So, um, for, so for now, I will put it in the like bin. Here I have a travel size of Soleil Blanc. It's very similar to Eau de Soleil Blanc, but it's more creamy, more dense, more for nighttime in my opinion. I can pull this off during the summer, uh, during the day. It will be like too much uh, for my taste. Uh, um, also a very recent acquisition, so I will put it in the like. Now uh, let's talk about these two here. I have a uh, black orchid. I, I think this will never be in my love. This is a very complex, um, polarizing scent. It's very out there, uh, if you know what I mean. Um, but there is something about it. I love, as I said before, I love the journey this fragrance takes me in. But it's not a love and I really can't find an occasion where I can wear this fragrance. 
I mainly uh, uh, spray this one when I'm alone at home and I want to like to enjoy the experience from and I find it from like an artistic point of view a really beautiful fragrance okay I will declutter it okay let's let's keep it real here uh, then I have here Noir Extreme this is a, again a very recent purchase and uh, I do enjoy it a lot it may become a love for me but I still have to play with it now let's move to Narciso Rodriguez I have here five fragrances let's start from here this is an absolute love for me I adore this fragrance I'm really thinking about buying the 100 ml as it says quite a lot <laughs> for me I am a 30 ml kind of a girl a beautiful frangipani amber musk fragrance it smells exactly like you took narciso poudre and put frangipani and some amber on it absolutely beautiful uh, unfortunately it's mostly a skin scent this is the only issue i have with it but i absolutely love it uh, this is this is definitely in my love bin uh, this is the new flanker that came out this year. I did a full review. Actually, I was the first YouTuber to do <laughs> an, uh, a review of this fragrance. And I did also a comparison between uh, them. I will, again, leave it in the link down below. This is the original one with an added Neroli to it. It's quite fresh. Uh, there is no much difference between them. It's just the added Neroli and freshness here in this one. But even in the dry down, they become almost the same they have the same longevity so but i love to layer these two together because when i layer them together i get an amped up frangipani and i love that so although this alone would be a like and this is a love but i will put them together in the love bin because as i said i love to layer them now let's move to narciso pure mask oh my god this fragrance it's just wonderful. Uh, I went through, uh, I think two, yeah, I think two of the travel size of this one. Uh, and then I bought uh, like the 50 ml. I, I really, really enjoy this fragrance. This is my go-to um, like bedtime scent uh, during winter. And also when I want to feel like cozy, it's like a fluffy, a cashmere uh, musk blanket. <laughs> I don't know how another way to do, to explain this thing. It, it was a love for me until I found this one. So this now became more of a like, um, but a very extremely like. <laughs> so uh, this is it's a like bin. This is absolutely a love. I love this fragrance. This is a new release. This is Musk Noir. Oh my God, I love this fragrance so much. It's again a, sin, a skin scent, so it doesn't project very much and it doesn't last very long. But again, this is my go-to bedtime scent at the moment. You can see. Yeah, you can see I already put a dent on it. I, it's very difficult to describe the scent. It's mostly plum. There is leather, but you don't get it so much. At least on my skin, I don't get the leather very much. It's musk, plum and leather. It's a beautiful, beautiful scent. And I don't mind like the lack of longevity and sillage because the scent itself is just amazing. So this is definitely in my love. This is a Narciso Rodriguez for her eau de toilette. This was almost a blind buy for me, and I have to say I regret buying it. It's not my. It's not bad. It's not a bad fragrance, but I don't like it. Um, something about it I just don't like, and I prefer the Poudre to this one. And I'm now really upset that I didn't buy the Poudre and chose this one instead. This will be in the declutter bin. 